Let me ask you guys about this uh, tax deal that's been in the news all week. This, this supposedly this grand compromise that that the Republican leadership uh, worked out with President Obama. Uh, you know, you've got on the one hand uh, the president's own party is at war with him over this. Uh, member of Congress at the Democratic Congress the other night when Hoyer and, and Pelosi were presenting this said, "F the president." Yep, All right. saw that today. Then you have uh, people on the other side saying, you Republicans just want a, a historic majority, and the best you could do, your opening offer, was a two-year extension of current tax rates. That doesn't sound like you really heard the message of the Tea Party voters in 2010. So everybody's miserable with this thing. The president's party is in rebellion. The wheels are coming off uh, his administration. And I have to say, I'm one of those who thinks that this was a terrible deal, that, that this should not have been the opening or first uh, offer. You know, Robert, you're a businessman. When you negotiate, you go in and ask for everything. You don't start out by asking for a little something, because this might be all you get. That's right. You know, you don't know what the other side of the table has in mind and what their parameters are. You only know what you want, so you might as well ask for it all. And as I say, ask for it all. Oh, and by the way, can I have a cookie with that? So here's what they did. They didn't cut taxes. They just kept the rate where it is. Right. You know, I think really this whole thing really should have opened a mo- first and First and foremost, I have to say, I'm anti-lame duck Congress. I think they have no business doing the people's business when they've been repudiated and we've elected new representation. But the second and the larger thing is, is it really should open a whole discussion about our tax system. When we have uh, a system where the top 3 or 5% of earners pay the majority of the money in and 50% of the people paying no taxes of any kind on an income tax level whatsoever, something's not right. You have to fix the system. I really think that if people understood what it costs them to be a citizen of the United States, we could have a tax system where everyone contributed something because we're going to get to a point where there's the makers and the takers, those who make money and pay taxes and those who don't pay taxes and all they're doing is continuing to set up this big divide in this country between the citizenry and that's what's going to cause a problem in the future in my mind we need to change how we're doing things so so here we had this incredible uh, election this incredible turnover it turns out to be 63 seats the last race was settled this week you're uh, Boehner and McConnell yeah it's the lame duck but you're obviously you know you're representing the new majority the incoming majority why do you not go to the this meeting, as Robert is saying, and say, we're going to reform the tax system. We're going to do a flat tax. We're going to do a fair tax. We want real tax reduction permanently because two years is, is just people will just bank a little money. You can't make major business decisions on the basis of a two-year reprieve on your taxes, especially if you think that in 2012 they're going to go up because that's where the parties that be, want, you know, the powers that be want them to go. And then secondly, um, as it turns out, uh, the more I've read about this, this, this deal is mostly pork. Most of this deal is pork projects, not the tax cut. The tax cut is a very small part of it. So this thing is loaded with sweeteners for both parties. This is exactly what we just voted against. Yes. The minute the echoes haven't even died down from those election results, Ken, and these people, these Republicans and Democrats, have gone right back to business as usual. It's, it's very strange uh, to me The obviously this compromise or whatever you're calling it is um, an anticlimax to all the drama that was was happening leading up to the election and then i think there must be a, it must be it's either a misguided attempt to show that the republicans uh, for the republicans to show that they want to reach across the aisle and be more uh, uh, compromising than the democrats were when they were in, in uh, power or it's just we've been suckered in again i, I think it's somewhere in between yeah. i vote with ken you know, Jade, <laughs> we've all seen the images of the uh, the rioting in London, and there was the, the story uh, this morning of Prince Charles and Camilla, uh, their car getting attacked, and, right. and the, you know, the fe- look of fear in their eyes and these angry mobs. I'm going to tell you what I think. I think that should be going on in Washington. Yeah, yeah. We should be. Why aren't we that angry? I think we've become sedated. Yeah, through things like American Idol and Dancing with the Stars, and we, more people know, you know, who's winning Dancing with the Stars than know who's the vice president of the United right. States. Right. In general, I think in our society, where um, so many people, probably a majority of people, are totally disengaged, it's a uh, 
couple of generations of mind They have TV numbing. in Britain, Robert. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's the story? Well, they're mad because uh, that's, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's because all tuition is subsidized. Yeah, I think, I, I think they're mad because the takers, as I call them, are getting theirs well, cut off. And I know that they're I know that they're riding over different issues, but my point is why aren't we in the streets? Yeah, why aren't I, we I want to see that look of fear that you see on Camilla's face. I want to see that on the faces of our now, leaders. We, we had a, we they're had, not they're obviously not feeling they're that. not afraid, but remember uh, when the Tea Party movement started and some of those things were uh, those crowds were happening in front of the Alamo and in other places, what we were seeing mostly from Washington was disdain for the uh, voter, disdain for the everyday person. It wasn't fear. It was it was smugness, and I I don't know how you fix that. I don't. I still don't think they have fear. But now I think they're like it's like so many things American. Okay, been there, done that, seen that. So let's move past that business as usual. You know, what's what's going to be the next thing? Okay, what are we going to have next? You know what? I I, I just I'm just reminded of um, uh, a gentleman I met uh, who was very involved in the Dream Act um, thing that they were doing, the uh, hunger mm -hmm. strike, and he, he he was starving himself. And I just happened to meet him the other day, and he looked fabulous, of course, because he was all <laughs> skinny. <laughs> but I I remember thinking I had a moment because I was busy doing something else, but I had a moment going, wow, how how. How rare it is to find someone who cares that much and who knows that much about what's going on. And a colleague of his is a friend of mine, and he was sending me some Facebook invitations and comments about, you got to call uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson about this, about, about the DREAM Act. And I had another thought related to this whole thing of how many people, I just had to think, you know, the, the, the journalist part of me kicked in. I wonder how many people actually know what he's talking about actually know what the dream act is uh, and actually uh, aside from what the two or three talking points that the mainstream media puts out do they really know what's in the bill exactly. do they really know what the impact for the country is do they really understand the precedence that th something like the dream act can set because once you take and kind of bend the rules all of a sudden you establish a precedence and you establish kind of a, a culture of it that can only expand. It never contracts. And but to I, answer your question, to answer your question uh, that you asked me, I think uh, it's because we're not getting angry as a country or as a city or a state because a lot of people just plain don't know what is right. happening. That's the that, really you, you talked about sedation. It's it's brain numbness. It's uh, well, it's uh, being caught up in like you said the next big thing or the next American Idol or the next. I mean, I have friends who they don't read the paper if they if they they don't know what's going on. They okay, just don't but, know but I agree on. with that. But let's remember, a, a lot of people voted. Yes. And they voted in a very dramatic and uh, uh, unmistakable but the way. The reasons they voted might have been different from what you think. It may be, but but here's where I'm going with it. Okay. Um, e if we just had those people. Um, oh, fired I, I, up, have, I get it. I have the feeling that some of the people who were angry a month ago have decided that now that we've got this Republican uh, Congress, it's going to all they're going to fix yes. it in January. And that and was I have a, news for you. No, they're, they're not. not. They're not going to fix it. Yeah, you know, I saw Ben. I don't know if any of you saw this. Ben Bernanke was on 60 Minutes, and he lied, just baldly lied. They asked him, "Is it?" I don't. I don't remember the exact wording of the question, but the question was, "Are you printing money?" Because that's what everybody's saying. They're just printing money. And he said, no, that's a, that's a myth that we're printing money. But you can look it up. They are printing money. They've added $800 billion to the cash supply in this country just this year alone. Now, that should make you angry, Jade, because the shoes you're wearing and everything you own and everything you've invested in is worth less every time they print more of these dollars. And that's not what they're supposed to do. That's not what the Federal right. Reserve is supposed to do. And he gave this lofty answer about manipulating uh, the economy to avoid inflation. He's not the grand wizard of the economy. It's the Federal Reserve. They're just supposed to be in charge of maintaining the value of money and the money supply, period. I mean, it, it, are people not realizing that their own belongings, possessions, your home is your castle, every day it's worth less right. because of what these people in Washington right. are doing? And so giving you a token extension of the tax rate is is in, it's insulting. Back to your point about the. I'm going to go set fire to something. Right all right. Now. <laughs> but back to your point about the uh, how everyone did the vote. They got fired up for the vote, and now they've kind of retreated. That's the we talked about this early on as being an issue of uh, uh, 
that we, we didn't want complacency once more conservative people were um, trying to get into office and then taking office, because if they do that, it'll be in two years, they'll get voted out if they don't really do what they promised. Right. They would well, do. I, I think so, that, and, and a lot of the public think, well, I've done my part. Well, <clears throat> they're in Washington. To, now to, we're going to be going to win in 2012. Well, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, to speak to that, I think on one hand, um, on one hand, we don't know what they're going to do come January of next year. But I think the outrage should be is that uh, a bunch of politicians who have been repudiated are not are, are going forward and thumbing their nose at us and saying, that's all right, we're going to do what we want to do anyways. Okay, yep. and I and I would say the same thing you, well, you mean about the, McConnell yeah. and about Boehner, and I'm as conservative as they and, and come, that's the, that's and I the, think those two guys are as big a problem right. as Dodd, the leadership Frank, Perot, didn't Pelosi, and Reid. That's the leadership correct. Didn't change. That's correct. And and these freshman congressmen are going nowhere if their leaders uh, have the same agenda and the same ideas of let's meet in the middle. The, the biggest and problem. Reach the, the biggest the problem I think is is that, and I was talking to a friend of mine out in Oregon yesterday who uh, was the it was the campaign finance director for a fellow that was running. He lost, but for in the or in the Oregon fifth, but they had um, uh, somebody in their uh, rotary meeting, anyways, who who is in Washington. Said the problem is you cannot let these new right. newly elected representatives, especially these Tea Party folks, be co-opted by the right. old guard of the right. Republican Party, and right. we the people cannot right. allow that to happen. Either. Very well said. It's ten thirty-eight on KTSA. By the way, we right off the bat we had three. People come in and make uh, all donations, right? Cash donations. Very exciting. Uh, it's like come we on three, in, folks. It's like we three kings of Orion. I think. <laughs> you know, like three wise men came in right away. Sir, come on over here. I want to shake three your hand. Wise thank guys. you so much. What's your name? Rick. Rick, thank you so much for donating. I appreciate that. Oh, no. No. We. Thank you. That's very generous of you, and thank you for your donation. True American and, right and, there. Social will tell you what good work they can do with it, and, and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Great. Oh, Thank you. Here. Coming back for Wrapping with Jack here. Same location. We'll see you back here. All right. We have more Gang of Four from Northside Ford as we get ready for Tuesday night's Wrapping with Jack, presented by Helen's Money Team with Network Funding. It's all for Family Service Association. Let's make every day a Christmas day. Let's make every day. A holy day. 10.43 on KTSA San Antonio Jack Riccardi Show and Gang of Four today. Christmas We're out at Northside Ford at 281 in Tacoma. We're, we're uh, amongst the Mustangs. Uh, here, so to speak. If yes. you're looking for us, we're among the Mustangs. That convertible looks particularly Ted, nice. And, oh, um, nice and yes, each gang of four member will get to take a Mustang home. That's oh, thank you, Oprah. That's an Oprah announcement. Yes. You're, God you bless us all. Look under your chair. <laughs> get under your chair. All right. On the gang today, we have Jade Esteban Estrada, a comedian who's appearing all this week at the River Center Comedy Club. What time are the shows? Uh, 8.30 and 10.45. All right. And, uh, of course, the big gig for Ken Slavin is this coming Tuesday night. It is. At uh, Rappin' with Jack right here. Any other uh, gigs you have? Yeah, actually, tonight I'm at a, a place in Almost Park called the Thirsty Camel. Oh. And I, it's my third show there. And it's it's a show at 9 and a show at 11. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting little neighborhood yeah. bar. And I'll be there with John Sheridan, the pianist who will be with us. Next week. Will you pl conserve <clears throat> your voice, Ken? I, I'm nervous. Don't, Actually, you know what? This don't year, reach this for any year, high I mean, notes tonight. I, I might need to knock on wood or something, but this year I'm not having as much trouble with my allergies. Everybody knock. All right. <laughs> and remember, I always have Dr. Wood. I'm going to knock on the shelf with here. A, an allergy okay. shot if I need one. All right. So Ken Slavin and his <laughs> surprise lineup of musicians Tuesday night. Robert Fleming will be. I mean, you're you're always here, but I know your yep. employees will be here too. Yeah, yeah. Rich feeding will be the with me. With Jack a couple other folks will be with us. You bet. And Rapping with Jack this year, presented by Helen's Money Team with network funding right here. In the meantime, we've already had people make donations, cash donations. You can drop off gift items. We have boxes. Somebody brought in a big shopping bag with, with very like some generous. Toys. So it's easy to do. You don't even have to get out of the car. We have people that will meet you if you pull up in the drive here at Northside Ford. Um, they'll just come out to your car. It's like valet donations. It. If you want to sign up for the Cowboys Redskins tickets, we're going to give those away Tuesday night. Uh, you can register for those as well. All right.